Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. When we are looking at infinite series and trying to decide if they converge or diverge, and they look very similar to something that we probably already know the behavior of, then oftentimes we can use what's called a comparison test. We're going to talk about the direct comparison test for infinite series in this video. Our next video we'll talk about the limit comparison test, which is a little bit different. Uh, so here what we want to see is we have the series 1 over n squared plus 1 and 1 over n squared minus 1. Of course these are going to behave and they obviously look very similar to uh, the infinite series 1 over n square. What we'll do it with the direct comparison test is we will analyze a sum that we are trying to figure out by comparing it to something that we already know the behavior of. So since we likely already know the behavior of the series 1 over n square because it's a p-series and we've looked at this in a couple of videos, then we should be able to use our knowledge of this to perhaps look at some of these. So first I want to just look at the 1 over n square plus 1 series. We'll compare it to 1 over n square. And again, we'll make this comparison because we know that the series 1 over n squared, it's a p-series, p is 2, and since p is greater than 1, that converges. We know that from our p-series test video. What we'll try to decide next is which of these is larger than the other one, if we look at the partial sums and how they grow. In order to analyze that with something as complicated as, you know, we have this formula and there are fractions and then we're taking an infinite sum, we'll just go back real quickly to the very basics of inequalities and work up from there. So if I have something like the number 3 and I compare it to 5, obviously I know that 5 is bigger than 3, so you say that 3 is less than 5. If we look at a reciprocal relationship, which is what we have here, we have 1 over this object and 1 over this object, the reciprocal relationship is going to be the opposite, one third is actually greater than one-fifth when five is greater than three. So what we'll do is first then maybe if we're just starting out try to look at these series and compare not these reciprocals but rather just n squared plus one and n squared if they were series which would be larger and obviously I think you can tell looking in this form the one with the plus one on it is going to have bigger terms so this sum will be larger than the other sum so we would say that that is greater than the sum of just n squared. So we can now use our reciprocal idea to look at the sum of 1 over n squared plus 1 and the sum of 1 over n squared to realize that the sum of 1 over n squared is going to be larger. Those partial sums will be at least as much as the other one. So where we are right now, we know the behavior of this, and we know that this one is less than that one. So if we put this all together, we have that the sum of 1 over n squared as an infinite series converges because it's a p-series where p is 2, that p is bigger than 1, so we know it converges. So this adds up to some real number. It doesn't blow up infinitely large. We eventually get closer and closer to some number. So since this is going to add up to less than that, then that must also, by comparison to that, add up to some real number as well. So now a very similar thing, we're going to look at the sum of 1 over n squared minus 1 and compare it to the sum of 1 over n squared. If we do a similar thing and look at not a reciprocal of these objects, but just n squared minus 1 and n squared as partial sums, we'll see that since each of these terms is less than this, then the sum obviously is going to be smaller as well. So that means when we take the reciprocal and look at the actual series that we have to start with and comparing these, we'll know the opposite direction of inequality is true, that this one is actually greater than 1 over n squared. So that being said, remember we know that this is a p-series that converges, so it adds to some real number. The problem with this direction of inequality is that if I'm greater than a real number, I could just be a larger real number, or I could be some infinite amount. So this direction of inequality, when I have something on this side that converges, does not actually tell me. This is a real number. Something greater than a real number could also be a real number that's just bigger, or it could be an infinite amount. So this direction with direct comparison does not actually give us any sort of information. So to sum up what we have from those examples, if the series we are trying to decide converges or diverges, 
is less than or equal to the series we're comparing to and that one converges, then it's definitely a real number. If this is summing to some real number, this is summing to some real number as well because it's less than that. So that one will also converge. Let's look at another situation here. I have 1 over n minus 1 compared to 1 over n as sums. So I first look at just the denominators. Which one is larger? n is larger than n minus 1. We're missing the minus 1 here, so certainly this one is one less than this for all the terms. So when we look at the reciprocals now, we will notice that of course this sum is going to be at least as much as this sum. Now this sum is a p series with p equals 1. This series diverges. So if you think about what's going on, this series on the right adds up to an infinite amount of stuff. This series the partial sums are larger than this series. So that means that this one must also add up to an infinite amount of stuff as well. It's at least as much as this one, and this one is infinitely big. So this one is infinitely big also. Now let's look at the opposite situation. We have 1 over n plus 1, and we're looking at the sum of that versus 1 over n. Well, n plus 1 is certainly bigger than n, so that means that this sum is actually less than this sum. So the question becomes, this is infinite amount of stuff over here in this sum. I'm less than that sum. What really happens? Do I converge? Do I diverge? The problem is, this could add up to an infinite amount of stuff just more slowly than this, or it could converge to some real number, right? It could converge to, say, a million, or it could also diverge. It just grows more slowly than this. So we don't really know based on this inequality direction. If I'm bigger than an infinite amount, then I must also be an infinite amount. But if I'm smaller than an infinite amount, I might just get to that infinite amount less quickly, or I may add up to some real number. So this direction with something that I'm comparing to that diverges does not actually give us the information we need. So adding that as a second item to our list here for the direct comparison test, if what I'm comparing to diverges and I'm bigger than that thing that diverges, then I must also diverge. If the b sub n that we choose that looks similar to what we started with, if we don't get the correct direction of inequality, what we might need to do is choose a different b sub n that maybe is also something we could compare to and end up getting actual information out of the test. What may happen also is we may need to use a different kind of comparison test. That test is called the limit comparison test, and that's our next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next one.